strong. As we said, you know, um, it's important to start well, but much more important to finish strong. We said some people started off well. Through all of life, you can find that. Whether you go in school, whether you go in, 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 in whatever endeavor, you find some people that started well off in school and then they drop out. You find some people, when, you, when school term open, the class have about 50 people. Uh, that's an exaggeration, but, you know, in some places they do. And by the end of the, uh, of the term, it's just about 10 people graduate. And it is so true all of life. In the church world, the same thing. Some of us may start strong. You always find people coming to church all years night. They may go for one week, two weeks, and after that, they drop off. That has been their habit. Paul, it is not strange to the church world or Christianity because Paul said to the church, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves as the manner though the habit of some is. So that is nothing new. But he said, you, you, should, you should stay together for a reason. So, so people drop off. People fall out. I started this race with a number of friends. They were going good. Some of them fell off, by the way, they backslid. And you could, you could think about many people that you know. They started well. When I went to school, there was a book, and my wife and I were speaking about it, called A Student Companion. I still want to get a copy of that book. I don't know if it's in print anymore. Yeah, yeah. Still in print? But there's a proverb, a good beginning makes a good end. Sometimes, nonetheless, a bad beginning, you can make a good end, but it takes a lot of effort to come back. But whatever point or whatever stage or, or, or condition that you are now, today is a day to start well. Or continue doing well, but finishing strong. We talked last week about Paul. Because at the end of life, Paul was able to say, you know, I'm ready to die. Why? Because I, I, I have finished the course. I've kept the faith. I've fought a good fight. And he says, no, there's a crown of righteousness reserved for me. He said, I want to go home. I'm going home. I like a ship going on an expedition and I went east, west, north and south, sailed the seven seas and now I'm coming into harbor yeah. to sail no more because I'm satisfied that I've done everything. But Joshua is a man too. One of the, one of the few men who could have said the same thing. As he reached the end of life in 24, he says, I want to make a fire appeal to all of you. He says, you know the way God led us all these years? How, and, he, and he started to, to repeat the history of the nation. He said, God raised up Mo, um, called Abraham. Promised him the land. He said, we went into captivity. Of course, we went into Egypt. And, and Pharaoh, of course, he was, he was afraid of us as, as we begin to multiply and, and they didn't recognize the work of Joseph and then they, 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 they enslaved us. He said, well, and God brought us out led by Moses. God led us through this place and that place. God drive out the enemies before us. He says, he says, he says, he says, no, I'm proposing to you, fear God, serve God, throw away the gods. Of your fathers and those um, that were, they were serving behind the flood and of Egypt, he said, and serve God. 
He says, but if it seems an evil thing for all you to serve God, if I don't want God, if I don't, after all that God has done for you, you, you want to be on great, but he says, he says, as for me, there is a resolution. There is a resolve. He says, as for me and my house, he said, I didn't care about nobody else. I, I tell you about me. I, I give you the proposition. I, I give you the reason why I should serve God. But he said, as for me and my house. Yeah. He, he, didn't say, he, said, he didn't say my house without me. There are people who will put their children and say, go to church. Yeah. But they ain't going. Yeah. Get serve God is a good thing, but they ain't serving God. He said, not my house without me. Me and my house. That's right. That's right. He said, we will serve the Lord. You say, I know some of us you don't want to serve him. You just you, you go for the ride, you're glad what you get. But he says, is it evil? Undesirable. He says, but for me, this is a man who finished strong. Yes. So we have to understand what is the secret of finishing strong and starting well. And I found it in this book. I, I, I can't finish it this, this, this evening. So I, I, th today, I really want to just do part one. I hope I will able to do part one. You want to send me kisses? That lasts for five minutes' time. But I want to say, first of all, and, 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 it, and you find it, you know, all about, you need to be aware of the call of God upon your life. Yes. Or you need to be aware of the assignment that God has given to you. Joshua, God gave him three goals to accomplish. God set a goal before him. God said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go into the land Take the people over because Moses was dead. God says to him, Moses, my servant is dead. Verse 2, therefore arise, go over Jordan, though and all this people on the land which I do give them, even on the children of Israel. That was the first thing God said to him. He said, take them over. Because Moses didn't take them over. Moses didn't finish strong. He started well. But he disobeyed God. I will talk about him some other time. Don't let nobody make you lose your mind, lose your salvation. Yeah. The people, they were so arrogant and stiff-necked. Moses said, see all you, all you want water? Whop, I must give all the water. Drink all the rebels. Yeah. He got so angry. Yeah. He flipped. He tripped. And he was, and he, and, he, and he took God's glory. And God said, because I told you to talk the rock, you didn't obey. You're not seeing. You're not going to the land. You will see the land, but not enter. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole sermon by itself. Yeah. But, but the, the first thing, he, 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 was, he, was, he was aware. You have to be aware of what God is, has appointed you or called you for. The first thing in that appointment, he says, take the people over. Yeah. Then he said to him, you have to defeat the enemies. Implicitly, there are other places where you read it. He says, he says, from the wilderness and this level, even unto verse 4, the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea towards going down of the sun. He, he, he told him the territory. He said, you, you have some enemies up there. Because when you have to go in that land, you meet some people there, you know, you have to take them out. Because these people were idolaters. And God says, because they don't want, they don't want to turn, they, they, they're sacrificing their children. He said, take them out. I give you that land. You got to take the people into the land. Second, that was, his, that was his commission, his mission. However, you want to define it, I'm giving you different words to say the same thing. So, so he said to him, you have to first take the people, defeat the enemies. And then third, he says, I want you to divide the property. Verse 6, be strong and have a good courage. For under this people shall thou divide inheritance, the land for which I swear to their fathers I will give them. 
That was the man assignment. He was aware of it. He didn't know what it was. You see, whenever, <laughs> if you don't know, if you don't have nothing, you don't have a goal that you're pursuing, nothing from, not leave nothing. You don't know where you're going. You don't even know what you're doing. You are just merely existing. So Joshua was given that by God. I want to say to you, God have a call for everyone. The first call of God is to come and be saved. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. The first call is for you to come and get saved. Talk to your neighbor first. Talk to your neighbor. Don't, don't watch me. I want to see you talk. I want to see you that way. Talk to him and say, neighbor, the first call is to get saved. The second call is to get sanctified. The third really is to live in a call to holiness. This is basically the call, you know. And, and the fourth is a call to, to, to be in ministry. That is the call of God on every person's life. To get saved, to come to Jesus, to be born again, to repent of your sin, and then after when you come to Christ, live a holy life. There's a job for you to do in the kingdom. It, <laughs> There's a place of service for every person. You see, you have to understand that. You have to understand that this is the assignment of God for every man, boy or girl. Especially those of us who name the name of Christ. You have to understand that. And that must be your pursuit. Of course, God will call you, some of, us, some of you, to be a doctor, to be a lawyer. That may, be, um, that may be the prayer of service. But in, in, in that service, there is the ultimate, which is when you serve in, in whatever capacity, your goal, your ultimate is to lead people to know him. Yes. So whether you're a doctor, lead your patient to know Jesus. Talk to your colleagues, whatever it is. That is what it is. That is the ultimate. And so, my friend, that is what he said to Joshua. As a church, we need to understand very clear what our assignment is. Very clear. Of course, we know people come up with all kinds of things and make a vision statement and make a mission statement. But unless that statement is, 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 is the content is what the words say, because I want that, when, when we come and just say, have a vision statement, have a mission statement, what, what, what are you only saying? It cannot be outside of what God requires. There is the mission of the church and every Christian has already been defined. Amen. Go into the world and make disciples of all men. Amen. 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 Listen my friends. You have to be clear about your mission. You have to be clear about that you know. You don't have to go, no, the church has to be no, no mission statement and no vision statement for that. That is already defined by Christ. In the mission, what the mission is a very broad. In other words, we, we will come up with, you know, what we want to, what we want to see. We want a big church that will house about 25, two, two, how we go house the people. We want, we want that church that, uh, that, will, that will be cutting edge, relevant, all that kind of statement. But the bottom line, what I've observed, when God gives Joshua a command, I'll show you how it works. You see, when you understand what you're supposed to do, you will find ways to do it. But you have to know that first. You have to know that first. That is the first. Pastor said first. So you have to know that. You have to know that. And then you, everything else. Whatever strategy you want to find, whatever we say, we want to keep a potluck for the people, a cookout for the people. What the ultimate, the bottom line is to bring them to know Jesus. And I want to shout out every ministry. If that is not the bottom line, we're not doing what Jesus says to do. It's not about entertainment. Now we just have a good time. Let me do something, have a good time, but you could join, you could join the Rotary Club, you could join the Kiwanis Club, you could join some other club because they have a good time. You could join Merry Boys because they're about merriment. But God has
has defined for us how we should live. You have to go out to your book to say how I should live. Live a holy life. Yes. Shun the wrong. Do the right. Be led by the spirit. My friend, you see, you have to. I want you to start off strong, you know. I want you to be clear, you have to be clear as crystal, clear as crystal. So, you don't want to put it all about the place. We are going to give you the focus, the mission. We are going to contextualize it and tell you about it. So, God says to Joshua, This is what I want to do. If you don't know where you're going, you will go anywhere. People will tell you where you should go. That's why, that why, that why in, the, in the resolution they tell you, make it your own. You have to want that. So what God wants, we must want. What God wants is what we, because he's, he's all knowing. He knows what is best for us. He orders our lives. And so he says, this is what, we, you have to be aware. So you have to start when I finish strong. Paul, the same thing that we said, he says, I know. God called me for what? You have to know that all the great men, whether Neymar built a wall, he knew what he was going to do to build a wall. Moses knew he had to take the people out of Egypt. He had to carry them and he wanted to dance and party and fit. And no, no, uh, my destination, uh, my command, my call, my appointment, my assignment, my mission. Different words, same thing. But what I'm saying to you is to take the people over yes. to defeat the enemies yes. and to divide the land. That was his man's mission. That's why at the end of his life, you were able to say, well, this is it. I did what God said to do. Now it's for all you people to do the rest. I want to say to you, God didn't appoint one man pastor when he bought to do everything, you know. God appointed the church. Right, yeah. It's not pastor should do that. Pastor has his role. Pastor had to make sure when he come, he feed the sheep. Yeah. That Jesus Christ says, Christ said to Peter, feed the lamb. Feed the sheep. They say, Peter, all you come and serve tables. Listen, there were confusion in the church, you know, pastor. Pastor, you know what happened? There people are getting food, Peter. Oh, God, Peter, come on. He said, no, no, no. It is not right for us to leave this yeah. and spend all our time yeah. in serving tables. He says, there are people among you. Choose people. Fill with the Holy Ghost. Assign them. Take you of the business. Yeah. Yeah. There are churches where pastor to mow the lawn, carry people to hospital. It, it doesn't mean he wouldn't do that. But that is not his ultimate call. And everybody is in, 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 in lullaby land. No, 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 no. Joshua, when he left the people, I want to show you something. They had to go and fight. Yeah. God said, bring them over. Mm. And they have to fight and conquer territories. So my teacher used to say, God had mercy on Moses. You know, them people were hard. Mm. This is my, they make the man lose, lose entry, you know. Yeah. So my teacher said, what God did in Providence, he said, Moses, take a rest. He will go mad. Take a rest, boy. And he said, give a young man, a, one of your mentors, one of your assistants, let him carry on. So Moses was a spiritual leader and a prophet. Joshua is a militant leader. I want to say to you, the church is supposed to be a militant church. Yeah. You know, we have no... <laughs> hey. You know, I know people about worship and worship God and worship is... is Natural friend. Worship is a natural thing, it comes naturally. It comes out of a sense of recognizing that God has been good to you. It comes out of a sense of recognizing that God is a big God. Every person who comes to Jesus, one of the things you'll observe in the Bible, God never tell you this is how you should worship, except He give the, he give the quality, spirit, and truth. He didn't say sing three songs, sing five hymns. Do two. No, God never did that. David was the man who started this whole thing, you know. Yes. Yes. God used him to bring another dimension, yes. which is good. But it's a means to an end. You ready to glorify God. Everybody who come to Christ, you read the first thing they do, they will bow. And they will 
they're worshiping. He didn't tell them to do that. He said, bow, bow, bow. Raise your hand, raise your hand. No, 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 no. What is important is understanding, be very clear of our assignment. Worship is not one of them. Jesus said, when they worship in the worship in spirit and truth, go on looking for them kind of people. And we say worship is a lifestyle, but I don't want to go into that. But the thing is, you have to be aware. We have to be aware of what we're doing, you know. What, what, what are we here in, in, in Cain? Why God planted this church here? To do what? Hmm? Why God saved you and me? To do what? To do what? That's a critical question. I, 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 why God made you as a human being? To do what? Think about it for a while. God outlined, he says, this is what I want you to do. Why well, think about our church in the world? The church is only there for a time. There is no need for a church after when Christ come and wicked people go. There is no need for a church. There is no need for preachers. This, this only serve, serves a purpose. Paul said, when that is perfect, it's come. I know people say the Bible. But he says, when, when that is the perfect, it's come. You have no need for preachers. You have no need for pastors. You have no need for evangelists. You have no need for healers. Because everybody will be well with the glorified body in heaven. What do you want a preacher for? You don't need no preacher. The church as an organism is in the world to fulfill a function and purpose. And you and me, we are all part of that, what is called the church. Some people think it's their church. They don't, they don't know their church. They don't know my church. And we, no, no, no. It's God's church. That's right. That's right. He founded it. Paul said he shed his precious blood. Paul said to the Ephesian elders, he said, beware of yourself. Take heed to yourself and to the church which he purchased with his own blood. Right. Some people think the church was theirs. Christ said, my house. Let me make it clear who house is. Shall be called a house of prayer. You'll make it a den of thieves. Sometimes we must be abused and we must use the purpose for which you were saved. Yeah. What was Moses' assignment? Take them out of Egypt. What is Joshua's assignment? I want you not just to take them into the land. Divide the land. Defeat the enemies. So, that is, is important to understand. Secondly, it is important to activate the anointing yes. in your life in order to fulfill that purpose. Yes. You know, I found something. Paul said, I mean, God said to Joshua, be strong! He told him three times. When God tells you something three times, you remember, he asked Simon, he said, Simon, love us thou me more than these? He said, yeah, Lord. He said, Simon. And then he, 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 he put a little more speed. He said, Simon, son of John. Love us thou me more than these. And God told Joshua, be strong in verse 6. In verse um. Uh, before seven, he says, Only be not strong and very courageous. Verse nine, he says, Be strong and of a good courage. Every time, he, every time he, he's saying something else, he's saying the same thing, but he repeats it in a different way. And very courageous. Be not afraid. Don't be dismayed. Don't tremble. Don't get frightened. Because what I have called you to do, my friend, it is, it is, it is an unsurmountable task. You have no might. You will have no military training. I'm saying you to defeat people. How do you want to feed them people? They have chariots. They have, they have iron instruments. They are they, they, accustomed to fighting war. You just come out of slavery. What do you know? 
All they have is hole and, 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 and what do you call it? Um, a, a machete and pitchfork. What the world have got from Egypt? Then he said to him, I run a little fast. So when they were coming, they run a little fast. Then he says, he said, I want you to understand the difficulty of the man. I want you to lead these people. Moses didn't do good. Moses lost his, 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 his entry to the promised land because of them. So Joshua is thinking, what? Them wicked, rebellious people? They're seeing all that God do and they're saying, they're saying they want to go back to Egypt. But you know what God did? God killed out all. The people who entered with Joshua, it's only, it's only two of them, what, the original people, you know? Yeah. Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. Or Caleb, that's the right word. So you know what? The parents died. The grandparents die out. I want to tell you something. Even though God promised you something, It's for you. You can lose it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You could miss it. Yeah. The parents came out, and God said, "None of all you enter, or they will go around in circles for forty years, yeah. and they will drop like flies and die." Let me tell you what God is saying to us. God, God has a promise and inheritance for all of us. The promised land. Now, everything about th these people was very, what we call existentialist, but right here and right now. It was about blessings here and, and, and call and increasing your herd and increasing your kind. And it, it was about right here now. But God has blessings for us right here and right now and e eternally. In other words, God wants us to live forever with him. But existentially, right here and right now, he says, he says, I will give you houses and land. Told Peter and them, and he said, Listen, they said, We have left all and folly. What shall we have? He says, No man has left mother and father, and, 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 and for my sake, he shall have houses and land in this life with persecution and eternal life in the world to come. Yeah. So, your inheritance as a Christian, you, 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 you're supposed to do well in this life, prosper, be in good health. That is all of yours. He was wounded for a transgression, bruised for iniquities. Health. That's your inheritance. Healing the children's bread. Yeah. You, will, you will not see trouble. He's my daddy. Oh. I shall not suffer. For Jesus said, in this, he said, listen, I know what you need. He said, the world worry and fret, but listen, your heavenly father will give you food. He will give you food. Fashion, he will give you everything that you need. All of those promises to you. The Holy Ghost is, is yours.